Hello everyone. My name is Priya Patra and I am the Vice President Outreach of the PMI Mumbai chapter. And today we are bringing you bringing to you our fourth event of the PMI chapter exchange. And we are so happy to welcome PMI South Florida chapter and PMI United Kingdom chapter to this collaboration platform. And as you all know, we already have a PMI Mumbai, Czech Republic and South Africa as the anchor chapters of this uh, entire program. Along with them, we joined hands with Netherlands and Colombo, Sri Lanka last, uh, last month. And this month, we have South Florida and United Kingdom as well. So thank you for joining in. Let us know from where you have been joining go to www.menti.com and that's your code 15111357. I repeat the code 15111357 and let us know from where you have joined in. And we will begin shortly. Okay, let me see from where we are having our participants, let me share my screen. All right, that looks very good. Florida, <laughs> Netherlands, Romania, UK. Wow. And just to let you know, we have, have uh, had uh, registrations from 30 odd countries. And of course, we are expecting <laughs> all our PMI friends to join in. And India seems to be the largest. Oh, Netherlands is, you know, yeah overtaking us. So thank you everyone for joining him. Do take a moment to say hello to everyone who are there on in this session. This is a platform for just connecting, collaborating and co-creating. So do take advantage of this entire event to collaborate and network with all other PMI or non-PMI members who have joined in today. All right. So just few working team working agreement. Let us know from where you have joined in, which you are already doing through the mentee.com. And if you have a question for our panelists, post it in the Q&A window, just like always. This time we are using a different uh, tool, the GoToWebinar, uh, with the help of our PMI UK friends. So they will help us to you know, sort out any technical issues that you have. Do please do put it on the chat window and uh, tell us what you think about this event. Yeah, I will pause for a moment here so that you can scan the QR code. Alenka, if you can type in the URL on the chat window, that also works. Uh, yes, I will ask uh, Rochelle to put it on the on the chat window. Thank you. So our feedback is very important because that's going to tell us whether we are going in the right direction or not. So thank you everyone. Please scan this QR code, take out your mobile phone. I have one with me here and I've scanned it already. I can't give a feedback to myself. So I'm requesting everyone else to give us a feedback. Do scan this QR code and let us know what you think about the event. And what other, there are a few other columns over there where you can, you know, put in your, uh, your inputs about future topics, etc. And don't forget to let us know from where you have joined in. So we had the registrations from 30 countries. So we would love to know that these are really the moments of inspiration that we get from you all. All right. So we may also we may sorry forgot to interrupt. We may also encourage you if you want to network virtually to enter your LinkedIn profile in the chat window so that everyone can see that and connect with you during or after the event. Okay, okay. so a little about the PMI chapter exchange initiative. Yes, it is all about collaboration, a virtual collaboration platform for chapter leaders to add members, not only leaders, it is about the members as well, to connect, collaborate, and co-create. So what are we co-creating? As of now, we are co-creating these events where we are sharing knowledge and we are connecting with all our team members here. And I think this is an exemplary case of virtual collaboration. 
and uh, that is the topic for our discussion today as well and uh, it is all about teamwork mm -hmm. i have been volunteering with pmi global since 2015 and i have come across and met many chapter leaders and uh, when i pause back and see i'm amazed by the passion by the dedication they exhibit as leaders and they bring to the table imagine all this passion coming together yes that is exactly what this platform is all about and community building a community of chapter leaders and uh, we are building upon each other's strength and uh, we are providing opportunities like you know speaking uh, just as we have SMEs from all other chapters here as well we also would have uh, you know authoring opportunities in local chapter publications and of course networking opportunities just as Lenka said right now and what about growth yeah it is growth for us as individuals as a team change transformation while at times unfamiliar but it does spur progress so that is the growth that we are talking about today we are a 10 plus pmi chapters on this platform and we are growing we get many encouraging messages from many other chapters who wants to be part of these events as attendees which is fine but they we have the support and that is what we are talking about the platform for connecting collaborating and co-creating so i will pause for a moment here and see if you have any questions on this otherwise uh, we'll move on to the next uh, thing just to let you know today we have seven chapters who are collaborating and we have created this event uh, two more join in in the next uh, month uh, we will have uh, United States, Phoenix, Arizona joining us next month, and that would uh, we will talk about that a little later in the last uh, parts of this event. Do we have any questions, Lenka, or we can move on? Yeah, we have actually one question, but I'm not sure uh, if to ask the question right now, uh, because <laughs> I think that maybe it would be better to incorporate it in our discussion in virtual collaboration. It's a very good question, and that is about time zones, because this event is an wow. example of collaboration that is happening across many, many time zones. And there is a question from Ardash, if the speakers are actually comfortable to work across all the time zones. But because we also have a special guest today, we have a special guest and I think that we should give him some space. I would uh, continue with our program and then ask this question during the discussion when our speakers are talking about virtual collaboration itself. Definitely. So with this, uh, I move on and uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Tejas Sura. He is a strategy oversight committee chair with PMI Global. Uh, Tejas is a, strat is, uh, is a project program and portfolio champion and champion of change management as well. He's a director of PMI, he's a professor, he's a speaker, and the list goes on. And this is a bit of a fan moment for me as well to introduce uh, Tejas because he's the first Indian to be on the PMI Global Board and he owns successfully uh, a couple of LinkedIn groups like Humor in Project Management and Cubic Turnkey Tidbits with over 60,000 members. Wow, that is a big group. Yeah, with this, I will stop sharing my screen and I would hand over the stage to Tejas. Tejas, the, screen, the stage is all yours. Thanks, Priya. Thanks for the kind introduction. Um, it's kind of a, I think, a you spoken too much about me, uh, so uh, I'm a little bit uh, shy, uh, you know. But uh, anyway, thanks for a wonderful uh, introduction. So uh, I think the the theme for this uh, particular session is wonderful. Anyone, anytime, anywhere, uh, and it's all about virtual collaboration and the future of work. And uh, if if the COVID nineteen pandemic has taught us anything. Uh, it's that disruptive change is now a reality in our daily lives. Uh, change, in fact, is, is accelerating, and uh, organizations and individuals are starting to recognize that change is no longer the domain of just professional project managers. Whether you're a manager or you're a professional uh, or you're a technical uh, worker uh, out there, an engineer, for example, in this new world, we are all 
basically change makers. Uh, we we make change happen. We make things a reality. We make ideas a reality, and we are all the time changing. So one of the major changes that we have witnessed recently is the shift towards digitization and uh, also communications in a virtual world. That's what we are seeing today. Uh, our workplace, uh, you know, our volunteer, uh, uh, you know, world is all about virtual, uh, virtual world. So, uh, so this is a big change that has come up in the recent times, and PMI basically owes much of its success to more than 300 chapters we have around the world, just like the, the 10 chapters uh, that are holding this event. And uh, to thousands of volunteers, just like all of you who dedicate their time and talent to advancing this project management profession. So last year when I was in Africa for the Africa conference, I witnessed a truly amazing event uh, with, the, with a theme which said one team, one song, one dance spirit. And that spirit was just too good. And I came back to India and we had the same spirit in the India conference. So I think PMI is all about this one team. We are all a one team. We have a very unified approach. And I think wherever you go in the world to a PMI chapter, it's going to look the same. It's going to provide very similar services. And, and we are all about service to our membership. So the virtual world has led to a unique opportunity for chapters to get together and provide the members experience of a joint virtual event like this one uh, with so many subject matter experts uh, speaking. So the PMI chapter exchange program, I think I had soft to this program. It's, it's really a well thought, wonderful program and I hope it grows more and more. Uh, this is also very much aligned to the strategy of PMI since I'm the chair of uh, PMI strategy oversight committee, I would like to say that it's totally aligned with it. In fact, tomorrow and day after, we have a strategic oversight committee meeting to finalize a PMI 4.0 strategy before it goes to the board of directors. And in our new PMI strategy, we want to enable chapters. We want to enable them for creating a unified, localized experience tailored to members' needs. We want to make sure that they are creating a greater value through resource sharing and chapter empowerment involving chapters more closely in driving customer engagement is what we want to do and we are we are actually uh, testing a couple of new initiatives like the chapter digital engagement platform that enables greater data sharing between the pmi and and the chapters and we also want to continue to develop a collaboration platform that allows chapters to better coordinate vol volunteer activities and share their uh, their best practices just like what you're doing right now in this program i mean so uh, uh, we want to encourage these kind of initiatives. Another initiative centers around special interest micro communities and, and PMI provides structure, coordination, uh, program management, allowing chapters to create micro communities in a variety of areas like around students, young professionals, for example, or around vertical industries and uh, also social impact uh, initiatives. So these are some of the new things that are coming up in our new PMI 4.0 strategy, which I wanted to share with all of you. Our recent focus has been youth and social benefit. And we are accelerating in these two areas for involving the next generation and ensuring our bit to the society. So I encourage the chapters to, this, to do the same and also invite our members to participate in these initiatives of our chapters. So. Uh, Thank you for such a wonderful initiative of Chapter Exchange uh, program. And I hope that this initiative grows and continues and this kind of is shared as a best practice uh, globally amongst the chapters. So uh, I think this is absolutely wonderful uh, what's happening here. And uh, I think our members are very, very, uh, I think uh, should be very delighted to experience the various uh, speaker from different geographies of the world and uh, learn from them and uh, collaborate. So absolutely great. Uh, it's been wonderful to be here on this platform, uh, sharing what the new strategy is going to be bringing for our members and for our chapters. So thank you very much uh, for inviting me to say a few words uh, uh, to all of you and to our members and our attendees who are attending this wonderful program. Thank you.
thank you teachers few words but tons of wisdom and i really love the fact that you said change yes inevitable but we can make it happen i truly believe that yeah. so uh, thank you very much for your time and with this we will move on to the next part of our segment which is the panel discussion anyone anytime anywhere and the virtual collaboration the future of work so what is this is uh, a flyer which is prepared by our uh, our anchor chapter south africa as we said we leverage on each other's strengths and what is a virtual team a virtual team is someone which is working together as one side by side but separated by waters brought together by technology this is a quote by virtual team intelligence and i think it is not even supported by waters it is supported by continents countries and cultures it is uh, it is but brought together by technology that is what we think is the is the future of work so with this i will hand over to lenka to uh, introduce the panelists of the day lenka if you can take this forward yeah perfect thank you priya so just before we start uh two disclaimers this session is recorded and it will be available online after the event so if there's anyone any participant if you would have any issue of being recorded on this session of course you are free to leave otherwise we will be very happy of course if you stay and we hope that this is a benefit that the session will be available afterwards then the second disclaimer is that everyone who speaks here they speak on their own capacity so we are all volunteers we work at some companies of course but we represent our opinions all our subject matter experts all the panelists they represent their opinion they do not represent opinion of any company and so who are the panelists i'm sure that you are you are waiting for that so you see uh, our panelists are on the screen and uh, so first uh, before we start i am not the panelist i will help priya to lead you through the session i will be asking some questions to our panelists together with priya so just let me introduce myself my name is lenka pinkot and i am vice president of programs of the czech republic chapter and I am also one of the anchor members of the initiative. So that's for us and now the, our panelists. So we have five of them. And uh, I would start uh, with uh, Colonel Inderjeet Singh. Uh, Inderjeet is the Chief Cybersecurity Officer at VAR Technology. In this role, he is instrumental in building the cybersecurity business units for the group. He is working on disruptive technologies in the cybersecurity space for securing IT networks, smart cities, and critical information infrastructure. What is also very interesting, he served in the Indian Army. He is alumnus of IIT Kharagpur and Symbiosis Institute of Management in Pune. And he has been consistently be awarded in the Army, and he was also awarded as Magnificent CIO of the Year. And that was awarded in 2016, an excellent award by the International Police Commission in the year 2019. He's also one of the 50 Innovative Leaders Award uh, from 2020, and he also received a Cybersecurity Leadership Award 2020. So it's like, wow. So if you're looking for some cybersecurity expert, here we go. <laughs> And then from completely different angle, when we look at virtual collaboration, our next speaker is Penny Poem. Welcome, Penny. Uh, Penny is the author of several books, including Virtual Leadership, Practical Strategies for Getting the Best Out of Virtual Work and Virtual Teams, published in 2016. And she works with people in multinational organizations who are grappling with tricky projects, uncertain, ambiguous requirements, stakeholders who need to be engaged, virtual teams dispersed around the world. So when you work with Penny, uh, you would see that she puts a lot of focus on communication, collaboration, clarity, commitment, uh, confidence, etc. So penny here she will now represent the the leadership side the the empathy side so i think that we're making really really very nice mixture here and our next speaker is priyanka saxena uh, priyanka she's joining us from south florida chapter uh, priyanka is project program and portfolio manager at johnson's and johnson's uh, cardinal health mercantile bank 
and she's been instrumental in visualizing, developing, and implementing South Florida PMI Chapter Community Outreach Program for high school and college students. She's basically bringing project management to, to school, to, to kids. And uh, through managing emotional intelligence, she has helped to deliver consistent and transformational results in challenging environments. She also acts as speaker, consultant, and coach for leadership, change management, and um, other organizational improvement uh, projects. So that is our representative from South Florida. Now I will jump back to Europe, uh, and I would like to introduce Bartek Janowski. Bartik Janowski is an uh, experienced Agile coach, Scrum Master, and developer. Uh, he has gained extensive experience in power supply, telecommunications, and banking industry. And he has experience of working in waterfall or Agile environment. He actively supports transformation of one of the biggest Polish banks by helping teams, managers, and other departments to create products that delight customers and bring value. And due to COVID, all of that is right now happening in virtual environment. We talk about many, 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 many teams, and Bartek mm -hmm. Rose is to support them to, uh, to operate in this uh, environment. And then last but not least, we have here Karabo, Karabo Moloko. Hello Karabo to South Africa. Uh, so Karabo is a dynamic business woman. She's CEO and digital strategy leader of Unleash Institute, uh, which is a strategy execution consultancy. She is passionate about unleashing Africa into the fourth industrial revolution. So here we go, internet of things. I guess there's also a lot of security questions. Right. Um, she is focusing on realizing strategies through project management and also she likes to empower leadership that enable that enable, you know, teams and, and people and empower them. She has Bachelor of Commerce degree, project management and change management certification, and she completed executive programs at INSEA and Oxford University, majored in digitalization and business close competitiveness. So another expert here. So uh, she is also um, experienced in industries such as mining, petrochemical, FMCG, finance, and she is a disruptor. So if you get stuck, that's the lady that you go to to help you <laughs> by her disruptive, <laughs> disruptive techniques. So I hope that you will enjoy our speakers. Welcome all the panelists, welcome all the speakers. And at this moment, I will hand it over back to Priya to kick off our first question. Yeah, so before I uh, kick off this discussion, I would like to introduce one more special guest who is silently there behind the camera and uh, graphic recording this entire event. And that is my friend, Agalia. If you can switch on the uh, you know camera and say hi, that would be great. Yeah, there she is. So she is a graphic recorder and she calls herself a visual thinker. And she's extremely creative. We will see that at the end of the session. I tr trust me, right? Okay. So let us start with our, uh, you know, first question that comes to my mind. I know Penny Pullen has had written a book on virtual leadership in 2016, and that time we didn't even know leadership could be virtual. Today, everyone is scratching their heads, thinking that, oh, how do I manage virtual teams? How do I virtually collaborate? So what is virtual collaboration exactly? Penny, start with you, because you have been working on this since 2016. Well, actually, I've been working on this since 20, <coughs> 2001, because oh. I went virtual when 9-11 um, stopped my program kickoff happening in New York. And we all had to do the whole thing virtually. So yeah, lots and lots of time doing this. So I suppose I wanted to sum up virtual collaboration by saying it is real collaboration. It's with real people, real human beings, working together effectively and creating real results. That's at its best. Mm -hmm. um, so all virtual leaders should be aiming for that. And it is possible. There's a lot known now about what works virtually and what doesn't. And I think sure. especially as project professionals, we should be aiming for that real virtual leadership, that facilitative servant leadership that helps everyone to collaborate. And I better shut up because there are lots of other people to listen to on this. 
<laughs> yeah so yes that is correct i truly agree with you and i you know this name that came to my mind when we were designing this entire panel discussion about anyone anywhere anytime that is what we are looking at with this entire virtual collaboration but with uh, this virtual collaboration come lot other stuff right with security issues data sharing issues so what do we need to take care of and how do we ensure that when we are virtually collaborated we are secured as well with this i like i think i will talk to inderjit colonel inderjit because he is a cyber security expert so what as leaders we should take care of while we move on to this entire virtual world yeah yeah fantastic is a is a very pertinent question because you know this is the time when we have been talking of all the policies which are made by us and it was a time to implement these policies because whether it was a business continuity plan your risk management your change management your disaster recovery plan you know your incident incident response plan uh, you know that was all in on the papers on on the laptops you know they were always been rehearsed only in the you know board rooms or with the cso's or the cios and this is the right time to implement these you know policies in place and uh, the companies who really took a lead and they were able to implement it i think uh, the effect of people moving to work from home was kind of uh, very less you know they didn't feel much of impact and uh, they were really working on the cyber resilience part right so that's where uh, the things uh, which we have been seeing quite a bit as well the the cyber security was concerned as as well as your information security was concerned uh, while people were really working from home so i'll develop on uh, the various factors later on as we go but you know these were the major aspects uh, you know uh, while you were working from home and that's what was important to make you secure right uh, while you were working from home your data was nowhere your data access policies were to be really checked now so those things were very important for us uh, to look into yeah so the bartek we have been you have been working with so many agile as well as virtual teams right so uh, do you see a change in the virtual collaboration that is happening now uh, uh, as well as you know what we used to have pre covid era um, how do you you know do you see a change in your teams as such um definitely uh, as every change we can see some drawbacks and uh, advantages uh, what I observe, uh, especially in agile teams and Scrum teams, uh, uh, the vital part of, part of Scrum is uh, teamwork. And uh, Scrum teams uh, used to work uh, in uh, in some. If we are talking about Scrum teams, they have uh, Scrum events. So, for example, every every day they meet on uh, daily Scrum and talk. Uh, uh, what they achieve uh, or, or what they going to achieve uh, and uh, I can see that uh, previously just they just uh, uh, switch from another medium previously they work uh, in physical world right now uh, uh, on uh, on uh, thanks to technology work on virtual world and uh, if you are talking about uh, collaboration I cannot see uh, uh, big change. Uh, Non-agile teams. Uh, recently, I observed that many just uh, introduced uh, daily stand-ups and uh, st uh, uh, stuff like that. But um, definitely, the drawback is uh, that uh, still it's a virtual world. So, for example, you don't know uh, if I'm tired or not. Uh, am I tall or not? Uh, what is on my desk, for example? So, uh, people. Um, uh, feel that they don't have enough information and uh, if we would like to have a, a chat in a virtual world usually we had to plan it if uh, previously be, be, before covid situation uh, we don't need to grab a cup of coffee and uh, talk about uh, anything yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, we do that now as well. We do have a virtual cup of coffee now on the video cam. Yes, but yes, I get it. Uh, yeah, the medium has changed. So uh, with uh, with this, I move on to Karabo. 
Karabu, you are into this fourth industrial revolution where you are you know, bringing into Africa. Uh, you are doing a lot of work with data cleansing and I love your data accelerator program. So what is this virtual collaboration meaning to you? Do you think a lot of change in how the data has been accessed? How do we manage this data? How do we ensure that we are not I know you're working on some, you know, to help customers not to get penalized with, you know, work on data compliance, etc. So what does this virtual collaboration mean to you? Is there a change pre-COVID era and COVID era now? Um, absolutely. I think, you know, uh, it's something that our speakers have alluded to. Uh, we're finding that a lot of organizations just brought in the technology and said there's a collaboration platform continue or collaborate um, and probably one of the biggest challenges and it's being exposed again one of the things we've been talking about when we talk about 4IR we've been talking about your organizational culture that the culture of the organization has to be one of trust of innovation of accountability now that we don't have physical proximity to our teams, to our stakeholders. Many teams are struggling to be effective in this new world because mm. I can't just walk over to your desk, Priya, and say, please give me that document. I'm kind of like sitting somewhere waiting for the data unless I schedule a whole meeting. Um, so the key element that we speak about when we talk about digital transformation is organizational culture. And I think this virtual world is exposing those organizations that have not invested in the right kind of culture to make it work. Yeah, so it's all about the culture as I understand. And uh, and culture, as I know, it comes uh, top down. If the leaders should yeah. walk the talk. If you're talking about trust, the leaders should show trust in it. And no other better than Priyanka can explain this better because she is in a you know leadership role doing a lot of operational management. She's a Lean Six Sigma expert. So uh, uh, Priyanka, I asked this question to you yesterday as well. What does virtual collaboration mean to you? Yeah, so as you know, many of uh, our panelists here have alluded to, right? Virtual collaboration is not nothing new, right? We've been doing it since uh, the time uh, we could see uh, way back when telephone was invented, right? So we have been uh, collaborating virtually uh, through the phone then through video conferencing and messaging and through the different social medias uh, that we have now. But we also see that, uh, you know, um, with this COVID-19, this uh, virtual collaboration has been brought to the forefront and um, has become uh, uh, an urgent need for companies to invest in technology that will help facilitate that uh, virtual collaboration. And also, we are also seeing that, um, uh, you know, COVID-19 has also taught us that uh, virtual collaboration is no longer an IT niche, right? Because before, mm -hmm. uh, most we would mostly see IT doing virtual uh, virtual collaboration, right? Because they were using the technology and people who were in the IT field, they were doing it, right? But now with, uh, with this COVID-19, it has forced our forced us to look at other job roles right right and job profiles that we would never think of them to be done virtually you know and i'll give you an example for example you know my friend she's um, working as an editor for one of the tv channels right and she and her entire team is now working virtually uh, whereas before that was not thought of ever, right? And they're working, working with virtually and collaborating, and still running programs on TVs, right? Their shows are still uh, running, and yeah. they're doing all working from their homes. And in the past, you would have never thought of that that job to ever be virtual. So yeah. you know, this is really changing our perspective. Uh, from an organizational perspective, from an individual perspective, and the way we manage things, right? So again, it comes back to the culture, right? How the company manages that and how trusting they are of their employees, because that is a very key important thing in the virtual environment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah go ahead, Lenka, do we have a question? Yeah, yeah, and I'm sorry for jumping in in this, <laughs> but just to react to questions from audience because they are they are uh, engaging on what you are saying. 
because you you summarize the the challenges that we see today and also that we've been in virtual collaboration before now i really like the remark that a remark that now in virtual collaboration had to move professions that were not there before and the audience is asking like all right but how to do that how to actually ensure that virtual collaboration is not just endless day of zoom meetings where is the collaboration happening there is also a question like can we actually develop emotional intelligence over virtual media or whatever so can we like we have it but now what to do with that how to actually yeah. collaborate yeah. yeah so uh, that's a very wonderful question virtual collaboration is not only about the tool right i think most of us most of uh, you know what i hear is that you know we're talking about zoom we're talking about webex but how do you build emotional intelligence excellent question i think uh, none other than penny can help us to uh, you know elicitate that how do you build emotional empathy or intelligence with your team members how you keep them engaged and inspired during this trouble time. Oh, like, that's lots of different questions at once. <laughs> um, how do you keep them engaged and inspired? Well, I have, I have um, a, oh, loads of different ideas um, in in my book, but I I'm going to have to top keep it three, short. On time, just been told one minute. <laughs> Um, so maybe a, maybe a few things. Um, I think it's really important not just to sit in front of Zoom meetings, but to think about what should we do together and what should we split up and, and do asynchronously, so at different times, so people can work when it suits them, but you can still interact and collaborate through collaboration tools. We project managers are quite used to those, I think. How can we be engaging? We can do things like telling stories, which really hook people in use narrative forms we can do visuals we can be very visual like your graphic recorder it's brilliant that you have that that'll help to hook people in and it makes it memorable as well just like story so i'm probably going to have to stop there i could carry on for an hour but i'm going to stop and <laughs> i can see lots of others have good ideas as well yeah definitely so i'll move sequentially i see karabo next to you i assume she's sitting next to you so it would be karabo now trying to create a personal connection yes uh, absolutely. I think, um, you know, we, of course, the physical world um, had its advantages, but on some level, Priya, I think it might have made us lazy in our communication because you can see me, because you can read my body language, I just speak and you, you know, as a team or especially as managers, we expect people to get on with it. <laughs> Excuse me. Now we don't have that advantage. So, <laughs> excuse me, part of making this work is every leader has to relearn each individual team member's work style. <laughs> some want to think out loud, some want to be left alone. And, and in this environment, we can't just quickly have a meeting <laughs> or have meetings all day and then think people will get on with it. There are people in our teams, or even I'm finding this with some of my stakeholders, I need to just sit with them and virtually and let them think about it and talk through it so I can get delivery. So all of a sudden, we have to pay extra attention to each individual's way of delivering results and being productive. Wonderful. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I'd like to add to that, right? So emotional yeah. intelligence is also about connecting with people emotionally, right? So I think it's also important for leaders to um, have those kind of um, social gathering, like, you know, not just your regular staff meetings that you have and you connect and you get updates from your team, but also to have some fun times, right, uh, through, um, you know, even if you're doing it virtually. And I remember um, when I was working with uh, Johnson & Johnson, our team was spread out across the globe. And uh, we used to have quarterly meetings and we would play Jeopardy on the uh, on our team so that we would, you know, learn about the different projects that people are doing within the company. So this way we learn about each other, but we're also having fun while doing it. So we would have teams and we would play Jeopardy. And uh, we would sometimes also have like fun, um, uh, fun, um, you know, points about our personal lives. So, you know, we would, and, and we, we would quiz about each other, right? So like who's fun uh, or, uh, you know, fact or, or, or uh, uh, fun, 
a point it is and we had to figure out who's who it belonged to you know so those kind of things that help you learn about each other as a team as well as learn about your company uh while having fun so i think um that is very important to uh, keep in mind uh, to connect on that personal and emotional um, uh, level for leadership with the team yeah, yeah. So uh, taking, that... taking the cue you know yeah taking the cue i'll just say you know we can convert this fun and uh, the, uh, the other engagement pattern as have a cfo and a ceo you know the chief fun officer and a chief event officer you know both of them engaging the team uh, time to time uh, you know with different kind of activities so uh, the team is engaged the team is uh, occupied they you talk about their birthdays you talk about their anniversaries you talk about their life events it's not just about the work because you know otherwise they'll get monotonous and uh, the productivity is definitely going to uh, get down so the yeah. cfo the chief fund officer and the chief event officer uh, and you can have that in a rotation you know you don't have to have one guy itself, you know so that you yeah. can have the talent yeah. of different people in the team itself you know, you're able to tap that particular aspect, which we generally never do that way, right? So that's one of the ideas uh, which we can always uh, have. Yeah, awesome. See, so you brought an excellent time. point indeed, uh, about celebrating, uh, you know, the uh, highlights of people, right? Their anniversaries, their birthdays, and uh, so forth, right? So that personalizes uh, a lot uh, when it comes to um, emotional intelligence and managing yeah. the emotional yeah. intelligence. So what I got from all of y'all is a personal connect, yeah, and understand your team better. So I will uh, request Bartek to share his view on this as well. How does he manage this entire eight distributed agile team? How does he, you know, emotionally connect with them and bring in that empathy? Um, I have uh, one big challenge we had. Uh, we uh usually every quarter we uh, plan what we would like to achieve and how we would like to achieve with uh, over 30 uh, 30 teams and we used to do it in uh, one big room it was two days uh, huge workshop and mm -hmm. uh, suddenly we had to switch fully to virtual world and we thought how we can achieve it uh, for example uh, one part was quite uh, quite easy because uh, during our um, workshop we use uh, uh, stickers, uh, whiteboards. Uh, so we just uh, change the tool. We 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 we, we use virtual uh, virtual uh, uh, backlogs. But how over hundred people can collaborate at the same time in two days? So we 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 can't just uh, uh, we can't just uh, do it exactly in the same way over Webex or Zoom or something like that. But uh, um, we thought uh, that we should work in asynchronous way. As uh, as Pen mentioned a while ago, mm -hmm. that uh, we give them two weeks to collaborate uh, together. Uh, Karabo mentioned about trust. So we trust them that during these uh, two uh, two weeks they achieve exactly the same as they before could uh, achieve uh, in two days uh, uh, in our premises. Got it. So um, just I uh, with while you were talking over the big room planning, I a, a thought came to my mind. SPC, for example, SPC training, right? Safe trainings. We never thought it could be done virtually, but with this COVID, we are doing it virtually. We are doing the PI planning also virtually. It's a training, I understand, not a you know the real thing, but obviously, which we never thought could be done, we are doing it. And that is the beauty of virtual collaboration. When humans are forced to do it, we will do it. And yeah. uh, this, Lenka, do you have any other question or we can you know move on? Yeah, and Priya, I'd like to also add yeah. that virtual collaboration helps us increase um, efficiency a lot, as my co-panelists mentioned, right, that uh, if we do the follow the sun uh, uh, routine, right, then we can definitely leverage resources across the globe to improve of our course. efficiency and deliver on projects quickly. Yeah, so it's not only across the globe. I'll give an example of my son. I used to always want my team sitting next to me. 
I would never even I I reside in Mumbai and I would never even think of a taking a you know team member in Chennai because we are agile. We need to sit together. Now I don't even care. I have team across the world now because I'm forced to do that and it works quite well. So that's right. that's how yeah that's how you take care of the talent that is available all across the world. Think about this discussion. I don't think we would have ever had this if COVID had not come in, right? But mm -hmm. now we have found out a way to reach out to such a global audience. Lanka, any questions so far? Yeah. Yeah, and I would really like to thank our wonderful audience because they are not only writing questions, they are also writing some comments and suggestions. So for instance, when we talk wonderful. about emotional intelligence, there was a comment that maybe it helps to understand personality types of people which I think is a very good comment. But now we have wonderful reaction that it could be maybe maybe great to appoint a fun officer. Um, <laughs> I really love this example with go Jeopardy ahead. from Sri Lanka. I'm really... <laughs> have a fun officer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really... Okay, it will make a lot of difference. It will yeah. make a lot of difference. Yes, yeah. we, we really have to have a fun officer who organizes all these events for us. Uh, like, you know, fitness programs and, uh, you know, virtual mixers that we have. So we bring bring our own drinks and we, you know, actually uh, connect yeah. with everyone. So we do have actually a fun officer um, at a company. <laughs> that, is, that is wonderful. But now I would like to steer the question a little bit different direction because we talked about emotional intelligence. We need to get our team members better. I love the uh, comment from Carabao about reinventing ourselves as leaders. But now let's look at it from a different perspective. There is a question that before there was a practice that people sometimes brought their own devices to the office. Mm. All right. And now when we talk about that, um, now with this much more bigger shift to virtual environment, some companies may be better, some less prepared for that. So the question is like, how do we deal with security in virtual collaboration and how is it with own devices? Are we equipped with the right tools, et cetera? Okay. Obviously, I'll, I'll the question that question, yeah. 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 Go ahead. Uh, so, you know, while we had moved uh, to the work from home and we brought in our own devices, plus uh, some of the laptops of the companies which were actually working on print, and now we are working from the home, the, the unfortunate part was that the security of that kind was never thought of ever, right? And uh, we were not prepared for the kind of capacity of all the data going out of the you know, premise. And that's what is a challenge what we are facing when we are going to go back to our offices, our data is not there. The data is all gone, right? That's another challenge what mm -hmm. we are going to find. But uh, the, the point which I'm going to tell you is the challenge is, while we're working from home, you know, there's a two-factor authentication which we should do, or a multi-factor authentication to authenticate any user who's logging into your system, right? That is one. When you have a BYOD device or a TYOD device, or your own device which you're using, you know, uh, you have the MDM, that's the mobile data management, right? To be put in place, the company should buy that uh, solution to secure your mobile phones because what's happening is you are logging into your company data from the mobile and when you log into a company data from your mobile, you inevitably put in your you know, user ID password and that's getting saved onto the browser, maybe a Chrome, whatever you're using and you know the hacker can misuse and get into that particular data and he's able to extract whatever he wants second is the vpn capacity because whatever you're using from the uh, the house you know uh, there's a virtual private network that means it's a it's a it's a tunnel which gets created between the device and your data center or the on prem you know data wherever it's residing uh, that has to be very secure and most of the companies practically we didn't have that VPNs in place, so uh, so have that VPN capacity. Uh, if you're not having it, upscale it. You know, buy more VPN capacity. Because now the number of people who are working from home are phenomenal, and that kind of VPN capacity we never thought of. Right. The third is as a device itself. Now there's a uh, software called the DLP, is a data leakage prevention, and this primarily is secures your data which is on the on the laptop so it gives you the data which cannot be leaked or a hacker doesn't you know is not able to take it out use that other part which you have to be very important is a secure wi-fi because most of us when we are working we have insecure wi-fi 
and all the Wi-Fi connections, you may be knowing that most of the, the, the routers have got admin admin password. We never change the password. So a hacker gets a free run in that case. Right? So those are the kind of things which we have to look up. Then it's a data backup. You know, the data backup is very important, which we never thought of. Because if a hacker is able to uh, you know, get over your data, you're gone. And to give you some examples, uh, world's best companies like Garmin has just been, you know, had a ransomware attack. Universities, there were seven universities in UK which fought, uh, you know, cyber attack. There's a University of Utah which paid uh, 400,000 plus uh, dollars last week as a ransomware. Uh, the company, the power company in Portugal paid uh, a ransomware almost, you know, a huge amount of money. So the ransomware is in vogue. The, the hackers are on the run. Uh, kind of there, it's a cat and mouse situation what we are into, uh, you know, uh, they're attacking everything, whether it's your power grid, whether, whether it's your hospital, whether it's an individual, whether it's a small company, whether it's a big company. So we have to have a proper policy in place now. And one thing which I want to tell you is, is the right time for all the small companies to move from the infrastructure, uh, the IT infrastructure, which was in your company to the the cloud, you know, uh, kind of thing. And uh, you have to move to the cloud that will give you a lot of security of your data, right? And uh, that's what you should think of. And data privacy is the key right now. Data is the most important and you need to really safeguard the data, whatever it comes. So you have to have different kind of, you know, solutions to be put in place. You just can't say that you are secure because uh, hacker will try his best to get you down and take your data yeah. away. Right? Interesting. Yeah, please. You just mentioned about uh, security. I uh, work for banking industry. It's not only about, from my perspective, it's not only uh, security uh, is critical for banking industry, but also legal stuff. So, for example, yeah. let's assume that. Uh, uh, all of you are my team, and right now we are talking about uh, some banking problems, some customers' uh, stuff, and right now we are not aware where the data, where the servers for uh, for that conference is located. So, for example, um, we cannot process uh, some customer uh, customers' data outside our country. So also we need to secure where the data is stored or, pro or, or process. All right. Priya, yeah. And, and yeah. you know, one, one thing yeah. I'd like to add here, uh, but yeah, please. Yeah. So if I can just add um, in this conversation and, and linking back to many organizations making decisions around bring your own device and and really the 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 thing we need to be able to participate in this virtual collaboration certainly you know from an african perspective like if i can just add in this global conversation we've really yes. been exposed as a continent uh, around the digital divide that has made that quickly switching to virtual uh, that someone alluded to earlier possible um you know we make an assumption that you know, COVID has come, let's all just connect virtually and that people have access to the actual laptops, people have access to data, cost-effective data and good quality data to make the collaboration happen without this constant interference of, what did you say? What did, can you repeat that? <laughs> so um, so the, the, when we talk about collaboration, we, we've had to go back to the basics as a continent and say, do people have access, access to data and laptops and begin there or else this cannot be a reality for us, which would be very sad if we don't participate in these. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to um, add to what uh, um, my colleague here said, uh, you know, and we're seeing that now also, right? Despite us going virtual and a lot of things, even schools are virtual now, but then in many countries and, in, and uh, you know, there are people who don't have access to 
to those digital devices to be able to even um, you know attend uh, school through because if there are like two three kids you know that means they have to have that many laptops for everyone to connect and to be able to do schooling virtually so yes there is a downside to um, this for for people where digital uh, technology is not that easily available or digital data is not that easily available it is difficult and it is a challenge um, from that perspective yeah. And we call and that as digital, digital inclusion, uh, because how do you include everyone in this thing? I remember I went, I was giving a webinar for South Africa chapter, and this very specific uh, question came up. How do you include everyone along? We are talking about virtual collaboration. We are talking about virtual leadership. But people, you know, yeah, there are cases where we do not have access to right bandwidth, right data. Yes, I will just hold for a moment and I will pass on this question to Penny because she's been silent for some time now. Yes, so what do you think, Penny? How can we digitally include all our team members and ensure that we have an inclusive team here? Okay, so there are a few things um, that are important there. It's access to technology is critical. So if you are an organization and you need to work virtually, actually making sure that everybody has access to technology. Um, make sure that you're use, uh, that everybody has the same access. So you want a level playing field and that's a key thing as we move back to more hybrid teams. What I'm noticing in many countries is we have some in the office and some remote and that's even more challenging. You know. Karabo is, is nodding away like crazy because then you get the people in the office <laughs> and each other interact and the people remote get forgotten about. Yeah, you've been there, done that. And I think several of you are nodding away. Um, the other thing is, um, can everybody use the technology that they have? And yet technology mm. is only an enabler. It's like electricity in a house. Once you have it, you don't say, oh, we have electricity, this is so wonderful. You just use it and you make your house a home. We shouldn't get too strung, you know, too excited about it, but we just need to make sure that we have inclusion, that everybody has the same access and everybody is able to use it. Sure. But yeah. there's much more on top that we need. Yeah, maybe leaders have to take a little more responsibility to ensure that, you know, uh, we, they have that access and many a times, uh, many people don't are not comfortable with using these tools like a whiteboard brainstorming on a digital whiteboard i have seen people being very uncomfortable mm. how do you train them and i know uh, you know we did something called as peer coaching circles where you know you put a people together who have the same kind of you know uh, problem and then uh, get more comfortable with it you know though, sometimes people don't even want to tell that they are not comfortable they want to stay yeah. isolated I've seen this happening. Yes, mm -hmm. Lenka, any other question now? Yes, so we have actually many questions and we're not able to okay. answer them, but I would like to turn it a little bit around because each of our panelists are from different area, different industry, different, uh, let's say, field of expertise. So I would like to ask you, each of you, to share one advice from your field, from your perspective, because our our audience they are pointing at many challenges it's difficult to create empathy to create emotional awareness then the thing is that not all of us not each of us has the same working environment from home we have some team members who are struggling working from home or being disconnected from the teams then we heard also some issues from security and uh, handling data so if you would like to share with our audience one advice try to address any of these issues that they are pointing out what would that be to make this new situation this virtual virtual collaboration easier for them or what to look at what to watch so Priya I will ask you to to ask our panelists one by one so that we don't talk over each other sure so I know uh, Indrajit always said always be prepared Indrajit where we prepared yep. during the COVID time? No, <laughs> but will, it, will we be prepared when we go back to office? So, now, what is your one, uh, you know, part uh, of so, advice? So, uh, my one word is always be prepared. And uh, <laughs> all the policies which I told you, uh, it's, it's a very uh, old saying, uh, the more it's set in peace, the be better, you know, uh, you do in war. So, you always win the war if you're, you know, setting yourself in the peace. So, now is the time 
to prepare yourself to go back to the offices you know put your all the all the policies in place all 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 the all the jigsaw puzzle which you are trying to solve of the covid in place and go back and be prepared when you go back to the office to you know uh, take it on the new normal so that's the most important so this crisis will go in some point in time this is only a transient phase so we need to yeah. be prepared uh, for the next phase now sure and uh, i know uh, karabo you said people have to unlearn learn and relearn again that's that was something which you told me what one advice would you give uh, to the audience here uh, when we think of a hybrid mode or maybe go back to office say after a couple of months hmm. you know i think organizations will do as much as they can to enable this virtual world but each of us have our own responsibility to start thinking about what is the most conducive environment for me to be productive um so you know one of the things that we have to just learn now is if i need to you know be collaborating in a more informal sense as i do tasks then i have to create that channel and platform for myself whether it's giving and getting myself into an instant message with a colleague that would used to sit next to me you've got to create those environments for yourself and and probably the thing that we now to need to relearn and if it's okay i use a very south african term is what we call ubuntu going back okay. to our humanness i cannot assume now that we we are together because we're in the same room now ubuntu demands of me to check in and reach out a little bit more deliberately in this virtual world yeah so that's that's wonderful and i learned the new south african word i'm not sure whether i can pronounce it or not maybe i'll call you after this uh, session <laughs> and learn more about it and with humanity i remember bartek told me this all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to be quiet and sit in a room alone so what is your one point uh, one advice to our team where we are always alone in our room now we don't have a team with us so how do we cope up with this um trust people uh -huh. uh, and uh, bring the problems to them so we can collaborate all together and uh, we can deal with any uh, any problem we can face trust people bring trust. the problem to them sure the trust is the main anchor which we should revolve around right okay so priyanka i will move on to you now what one advice would you give to our audience today global audience today yeah so one thing that we all know right one thing that is most constant is change right yeah. so this covid has definitely um you know uh, uh, taught us uh, or it has changed the way we we work right we will never go back to the way we were before very face to face and less uh, virtual uh, and i believe that we will be more virtual as i said um, the jobs that we uh, didn't think could be virtual are virtual so again it uh, also as uh, bartek said that you know employers uh, have also learned that virtual working virtually works right it also saves them a lot of uh, money from a uh, keeping an office and you know all the utilities perspective and uh, so if they have if through this covid if they have learned to trust their employees to work virtually then i think that would be the new norm so people should be prepared uh to be able to adjust to this new norm uh, of work working virtually and uh, if they're adjusting now i guess this is adjusting period they will become more comfortable as we go through this so uh i think everyone my one advice would be that embrace the new change and it's always for the better so yeah. yeah and last but not the least over to penny I know you have many, many uh, advices, but just one most important advice that you would like to give us. One. Just one. Ooh. Okay. I think um, the key thing I would say to any project professional out there listening is it's time for you to step up. Mm -hmm. Step up to be the awesome. best virtual leader you can. Develop your own skills. Develop that of others, and 
be a facilitator. Make it as easy as possible for everybody in your team to do their best work. Yeah, sure. Okay, Lenka, uh, do we have any other questions? Oh yeah, really plenty. I mean, we're not even able to answer that, but I like one question, which I think would be really good to wrap up with this answer the whole session. So there is a question from uh, Shintan, and uh, the question is, what is the new abnormal that one must adapt to? So when you look a little bit in the future, because so far we reflected on the past and how do we deal with today's situation, but what is your you know vision of the future like what is going to stay how we can benefit from all of that yeah so what well, you, I'm going to what start guys <laughs> so i think that this the virtual as i as i can as i said in my previous answer right that this is the um would probably be the new norm that uh, we would do face to face, but virtual will become a key aspect of our day to day uh, working. So as Penny yeah. mentioned um, that, you know, uh, we as leaders should definitely help facilitate become and, and update our skills right to become uh, savvy users of technology and utilize our enablers to the best and, and most efficient way to be able to uh, work with teams across the globe yep. and also to not just that but also take the time to uh, uh, connect emotionally with with our team members and uh, as we say you know stop and smell the roses we can do that virtually as well so yep. uh, uh, so i think um, this is going to be the new norm and we have to learn to be more more um, you know uh, connected and, and uh, as leaders, be able to challenge our team, inspire our team, motivate, and we can do that virtually. So, uh, you know, like we, we can do, we do Toastmasters meetings through the, uh, yeah. through you know, virtually, um, you know, we play quizzes or award people for their, um, their, you know, uh, accomplishments and so forth, right? Um, so that, that I think, uh, you know, this is going to be the new norm going yeah. forward. Good, uh, learn normal, to... uh, normal or abnormal? So the question was normal, what are you abnormal? abnormal. <laughs> yes, uh, because yeah. when when something is done on a regular basis, that becomes the new normal. You know, yeah. so the the yeah, future yeah. abnormal is the new normal now. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. That's a very nice way to put it. The future of the abnormal is a new novel. Okay, Penny, uh, what is the new abnormal for you? You're muted, Penny. You're muted, Penny. Sorry. I hope that Karibo's okay. vision of Ubuntu, that connection between <laughs> humans, through this virtual medium will really extend that companies will realize that the people working for them have done so much to to change everything within a few days as lockdown started across countries and to remember that people are way more than just little measures of efficiency and if we can bring the whole person and the whole connection and humanness to work wouldn't that be wonderful and if this can be just a tiny little kick in that direction would be good very nice so it's all and about that, that uh, yeah, go ahead. virtual environment uh we are working longer hours because we're saving time driving and going to offices we are utilizing that time to work so for employers it's more improved efficiency from uh their staff uh and the members so um i think it is a beneficial yeah. thing for both sides yeah and, and, uh, and, that and i'd like, like to take yeah. i'd yeah. like to take the cue yeah. from penny and you know uh, one line is rely on your team they're never, never going to let you down so that's awesome. the most important here, which we have to see it you know that's a new abnormal but uh, because you used to work you know face to face uh, uh, you know uh, do the parameterization uh, see what they're doing now you've got to really rely on the team when they're not working in front of you you know but sure. they'll deliver that's the beauty they'll of it they'll deliver you yeah if you trust them they will definitely yeah, you, you have to trust them, them. Yeah, 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 that's what you have to trust them. They'll deliver you the best. Yeah, with this, I'll move on to Bartek. And uh, the, I think that's the last bit of the you know uh, session here. Bartek, what is your view on the new abnormal? You're mute, you're mute, Bartek. 
Yeah. Uh, tough question. Hard to say. I think uh, uh, many of us uh, are familiar with VUCA uh, word, and usually it's yeah. uh, uh, some uh, abbreviation we are familiar uh, with uh, uh, because we read it from some magazines uh, uh, on some trainings and right now it's a real VUCA word and uh, it's not only on the business side but uh, in our real world so in fact we don't know what uh, what will what will happen uh, uh, what will happen uh, and I think we just uh, constantly should keep trying to overcome keep our trying. problems and we will succeed one day yes so with this, uh, Lenka, uh, do we have any any other question or we will move into the last segment? We just have three more minutes. And I would request Nirvana to, you know, wrap the session up and, uh, you know, uh, talk about a few about, about the next event as well. Nirvana, hi, everyone. Yes, yes, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Nirvana Rampasad, VPE of PMI South Africa chapter. And I want to congratulate all our panelists today. It gave us much more food for thought from uh, Colonel Indujit and his descriptions of how we need to be secure around our Wi-Fi, around our VPN, and around our data backups. And, and to Bartek telling us about the legal liability around your data storage, which is something that I don't think we think about every day when we press that send button. And yeah. I think, Karabu, once again, great to hear you speak about the different aspects of people's personalities in the virtual workspace. Also something that I don't think any of us take for granted. Um, Penny, yourself, world beyond the Zoom collaboration. I think that for me was a great takeaway and in terms of um, what you said, Priyanka, around how COVID has made us relook the different roles, because now we're in a virtual workspace. And the indirect consequence of that, which is great for us, is the cost saving that we go around that. And I think we can say well done to everyone. And I'd like to then say that if you have any feedback, please scan the QR codes that should be on the system. And also in the chat box is a tinyurl.com link that you can click on to also have your suggestions or feedback put in there. And then our future event that's going to be happening from our collaboration platform, uh, we will also have the Phoenix, Arizona chapter joining us then. And this would be the 25th of September. This collaboration will be our digital book club and it would be on digital transformation. And thank you everyone for attending today. Yeah. Back to you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Nirvana. Thank you very much. Yeah, the QR code, the QR code is on the screen. You can scan and give give us your feedback. And um, I would also request Agalia to share her screen now. Mod, if you can give the rights to her. She will share the yeah. graphic that she has recorded. So sure, sure. we are waiting, Agalia. Everyone is eager. <laughs> and you will be on. See it? Not yet. Yeah. We can't. I just shared it. Not yet. Mark, I just shared are it. You... Yes, we can see it now. Yeah. Okay. And there are wonderful panelists out oh, there. Amazing. <laughs> just give Thank a clap you. for Agalia, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And if you can switch on your video, we will take a snapshot along with this graphic recording. And everyone, uh, this will be posted so on social so media. Have... Yeah, share your message. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. And this will be posted on social media. Everyone will get it. So don't worry about it. So Amazing. thank you, what everyone. Thank you. Amazing work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So thank clap. You. Bye, everyone. Clap. Yeah. And uh, let's take a screenshot as well. Yeah. So that we remember this. And uh, with this, we are one minute 
on top of the hour. So we will have to wrap up now. Thank you everyone for joining in and we will see you again next month, September 25th. And watch this space for more. There will be lots of posts on LinkedIn, of course, and you will know what's coming up next. And thank you panelists for this wonderful session. And thank you, Lenka, for collecting all the questions and shooting them at the right time. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you, Priya, thank for you. the thank perfect you. presentation. Thank you. And UK thank team you. on behind. You don't see them, but they are there and they, oh. are, they were helping tremendously throughout the whole session. So thanks to Ugo, thanks to thank Mark you. and to Rochelle who were behind all of this. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you, Mark. Mark. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Really wonderful thanks. to interact with you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.